Welcome to FS Derek, and uh, we're going to do something a bit different today. We're going to play some Microsoft Flight Simulator X Steam Edition. So here we are. Let's get going. Oh, that's all right. Okay. Two. Okay, fine. Let's go. What? What? No, 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 wait a minute, no, 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 I read about this. What you've got to do, you've got to run Steam in administrator mode, and then you don't get the same trouble. So here we go, Steam, right click, run as administrator. There we are, look, here we are, this is this will fix it. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, okay, 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 welcome everybody. What we're going to do today, we're going to play some Microsoft Flight Simulator X Steam Edition. What? Oh. Right, okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh my goodness. Okay, dovetail, fail. Dovetail equals fail. Let's play. Some explain. Yes. Will it work? Will it work? Yes, it will. No administrator privileges required. No massive great dovetail fail. So what should we do today? We flew down to Gambia. We're on the ground in Banjul. We did a bit of local flying, didn't we? Have I plugged the joystick in? I think I have. I've got a fantastic setup here. I'm going to let you carry on thinking that because um, when you see the sort of setup that people have got, it's always disappointing, isn't it? See Matt Matt Pedalston's train driver shed out the back with his jerky PC. <clears throat> DTG Rail had to upgrade his PC. Even old uh, Frugal had to have a PC upgrade before he could do anything decent. And it's all—it's just a bunch of wires, isn't it? When you look at it, and you and you think, "Oh, this is great. This bloke must have some sort of recording studio, massive, great TV, etc." You know, proper joystick, yoke, pedals, and everything. No, it's just a, my studio is exactly the same as yours. It's just a bunch of black wires, black wires everywhere, and somewhere in the middle, a small bit of it has been cleared out, and that's where I sit with a. My mouse in my left hand and my joystick in the right. Right, I'll see you when it's loaded. Right, here we are. So let's just have a quick look and check where we are. Location, local map. We're on the ground in Banjo. Yes. Enter to get back. Let's do uh, environment weather and download it right now. Oh, there's not much in the way of weather, is there? So, we've got to decide where to go. Let's just do a return to get rid of that. And I'm going to do an alt tab to tab out and get a... We'll get a... What's it going? And do um, Banjo Map. Now we can zoom out on here and we'll zoom out quite a way because we flew, where did we fly? We flew from Gibraltar to Banjul. Oh, that was funny. It was about a four hour trip and uh, I put the thing on autopilot and went in the back and started chatting with the celebs and um, before you knew it um, I'd completely forgotten about the um, descent into Banjul and I was literally over the top of Banjul Airport at about 25,000 feet and I had about five pints of fuel left. <sighs> so let's have a look. So where, how far is it from there to there? Can we measure that? Is there a tools on here? No. No. Oh, that, that looked like a tool, didn't it? Menu. 
tips and tricks. Share da 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 da. No. I thought I saw a line there. No. Oh, I think it's just from the photo showing you where it's taken. Uh, okay, well, that's uh, yeah, photos from all over the place. Jolly good. So we now we can't draw a line. We can't write. Ah, made a distance. Oh yes. So from Gibraltar to the Gambia is two thousand seven hundred kilometers. That's not bad, is it? Hold oh, it down here. About seventeen hundred miles. So. Assuming we can fly 1,700 miles easily, where will that take us? Accra. Accra in Ghana? Do you want to go to Ghana? It's all a bit, you know, iffy around here, isn't it? Don't fancy, um, like us, so, you know, it's all a bit war-torn. That's not bad, is it? About 1,200 miles. That's just slightly greater than the height of the UK. The idea is to get down here to Cape Town. Cape Town? Cape Town, originally. Could we get. Let's have a quick look and see. If we flew to. What's the closest place to here? Sierra Leone. I wonder if we could get across here. We might be able to, mightn't we? It is 1800 miles. We might just be able to get across to Recife from wherever the nearest airport was it's probably Freetown isn't it? Sierra Leone let's try there 1900, Whoa, that would be a challenge wouldn't it? we'd have to strip out everything I wonder if that would be better that's a bit better it depends on the wind of course Whoa, that would be a challenge wouldn't it? nothing but water the whole way unless we went via Georgetown now, I bet Georgetown yes Georgetown must have a airport mustn't it so I don't want to fly to Monrovia because I'm a bit worried that it's a bit you know going to lose the plane Cote d'Ivoire sounds better it's probably no it's probably worse I don't know and then we could go to um, Georgetown couldn't we is there an airfield there doesn't look like much oh yeah of course there is look at that oh I say Royal Air Force Ascension Ascension Base abso ruddy lootly <laughs> <laughs> excuse me okay then that's the plan pop pop down to Cote d'Ivoire don't you know and land in oh, do we have to land let's have a look at airports in Cote d'Ivoire airports Cote d'Ivoire yes ICAO DIAP Aeroport must be French. French colony. Right, remember that. D I A P. That's where we're going. So, we're cold and dark. Let's get fueled up. Weight and fuel. Set to max gross. I've lost some weight. I'm down to 220 pounds. Well, I've got to take some baggage, so I'm going to take so about 500 pounds worth of payload. And then we'll. No, I don't want to increase the payload, I want to increase the fuel. That will do. Six and a half hours in the air, that's plenty. That's plenty. Enter. Oh, there we go. Did you see it? Did you feel that? Did the earth move for you? Let's get cracking then. Oh, we've got to decide what time we're going to do it. Environment, date and time. Um, 
Well, we would probably start quite early in the morning, actually, so I'm going to start at 6 o'clock. Let's start just before... Um, and it's December the... It's later than December the 16th. It's December the 22nd, and I'm going to set off early. I'm going to set off about half past five. No, okay, so... Yes, it's six o'clock here, but it's half past five there. Right. Enter. Oop. It's a bit on the dark side. Special. What is it? View. Toggle aviation flat line. Oh yeah, that's all right. That's good. Oh, I say. Well, we would, would we would, wouldn't we? We would start off before to before dawn. So we get the nice weather. So let's get cracking. So first thing we do, main switch on, and um, no, don't put the gear up. Beacon on. One of those is the beacon. That's right. That's the beacon on. And uh, let's get rid of that. So starter on. No, that's the generator. Starter on. Because I'm starting up the wrong engine, but um, we'll do a time to have a slight change. Let's look outside, checking that's going, that's going. Excellent. As soon as that gets cracking, we'll get a bit of uh, juice through the old uh, DC system. Turn the starter off. And now we can turn the lights on. Gotta flick the old um, pressure equalizers there. Now we can have the landing and uh, nav lights on, recognition lights, and the strobe. And then we'll go up to view and turn the. Um, oh, don't want the night vision goggles. The aviation flashlight off. And uh, I'm going to put that in high idle. Well, we get the other one started up. So, right. Constant ignition. Once that gets over 12. There's the old props going around, you can just see them there. Watch the dials. Up comes the old propeller RPMs. Come on. That's it, we're waiting for this to get up to 69, this to go down to 92. Well, I know the 61 actually I think is right, isn't it? Because we've only got this on um, the conditioner on medium. There we are. going to swap hands on the mouse now so we're going to put the old um, check the throttles working check the pedals are working check the yoke is working excellent so we'll have the other generator on we'll turn the right starter off we'll arm the auto feather we will uh, put on the um, avionics master switch and we're going to do a little bit of flight planning actually I'm just going to go direct this time I'm going to save 
because uh, we're in Africa now so we're going to go direct to push the cursor no direct to is it small yeah D B enter activate distance 896 nautical miles on a desired track of 129 so let's get this all set up so we can uh, we'll set the um, course to we'll put the heading to 129 which is pretty well straight up and out isn't it and then we'll be climbing. Um, we'll be climbing up at uh, about two, our usual customary 2,000 feet a minute. We'll engage the yaw damper, but not the autopilot at the moment. That's that. Let's go down to here. We want to dial the cabin pressure up to about 25,000. We'll cruise at 24. It's nice to cruise in the cool air. That's why. Let's pop that back. Oh no, that's not the right one. Let's turn that on. That's the turning on, was not it? I think it's 5,000. Is it 4,700? We were squawking before, it doesn't matter obviously. And the initial altitude we're cleared to is, um, let's say, 10,000. Again, well, no, why not? Let's just clear ourselves straight to 25. There's nobody else around here. All the commercial flights are going straight over the top. So we'll clear ourselves to flight level 250. I'm going to dial in the QNH of uh, 1013 straight away. Although the QFE is in fact 29.85. Um, so we'll be on a flight level straight away. We're going to go on the GPS straight away so that's on GPS so let's do a last minute check we'll take the um, handbrake off we're full to the gunnels with fuel we've got the starters off we've got everything else on we've got the auto ignition is armed we'll turn that off after we take off and we've got all the right lights on we don't need any icing lights on We've got the, um, I don't think the tail flood works to be honest with you. What's the outside temperature? Outside temperature is 32 degrees Celsius. And it's half past six in the morning. I think I might take off with some, no, it's a long runway. I'll be all right without flaps. We've got the pressure and everything set, so. Basically, have a look around and just check that everything that is, should be flicked is flicked. That's not bad as it's taken us only six minutes to get started. So we're called um, ready for takeoff. We've got a master light flashing, but that, what's that telling us that uh, we've got down here? We've got the ignition, the automatic ignition on, and also the landing and taxi lights. So we can turn the taxi light off. We finished taxiing because we're um, on the runway. So reset the view, clear for takeoff. And off we go. So we're going to climb up and uh, just uh, go straight on to heading an autopilot. Just hold it on the brakes for a second. Take it up to about 900. Check everything's uh, coming up okay. That's uh, up to 1900 now. bit uh, spooky isn't it taking off into the inky blackness 100 knots so I'm going to start to ease back a little bit on the stick and that's us climbing away so we're going to keep it about 130 knots and turn slightly left gear up of course Once 
which are fairly soon you're not not going to be coming down with a bang keep the torque at about 2000 now I'm turning left and I want to be turning right so and also we're following this green line now see the banjo VOR the, the uh, ADF let's just level off a bit Now what I'm looking for, I'm looking to put the banana on about the 10 degree line because that's going to keep the airspeed about right so that's what I want in terms of airspeed and um, assuming that the airspeed is correct and that's uh, which it will be if we keep that on the 10 degree climb then I'm looking really to get the green line here centred up because that's the centre of the GPS track so we're going we're steering too far left now so we're regaining the GPS track and now I'm going to straighten up there we are so that uh, the purple the magenta lines are telling us I think where to cl the climb for um, the 2000 feet per minute climb but it's a bit uh, too steep isn't it we don't want that let's keep feeding that torque in I'm wandering off to the left, I'm not keeping the um, heading very well, am I? Probably not, you know, not too bad, but not too good either. Yeah, so I'm climbing just a little bit less than 2,000 feet if you look at the um, vertical speed indicator, the VSI. So we're at 4,000 feet, well, we're at flight level 400. So I'm going to engage the autopilot and put it on heading. And um, just the climb at 1,600 feet a minute. So let's press that again because that's not engaged. Or was it? It was engaged. So now we're to do an altitude, altitude select. And. Uh, heading so the yaw is on altitude select the vertical speed is 1600 feet a minute autopilot is on <clears throat> and the speed's about the speed's fine although we, we again we talks not quite up to what it should be but we're doing fine so let's put that away now in fact what I need to be doing I'm um, because we're pretty well on the GPS course I'm going to click nav and it'll probably do a slight left turn just to because we're slightly right of centre line and uh, it's going to acquire the centre line there so now now it will fly all the way to um, wherever we're going and the distance is 888 nautical miles we're doing 150 knots this is the the airspeed this is the over the ground so about 132 through the air, 151 over the ground because we're at 6,000 feet, the air gets thinner as we go higher. The desired track is 129, we're actually uh, on an actual track of 126, so that may be because we've got a slight wind from the left. And uh, the bearing is um, 129 where we want to go, and we've got about 5 hours 45 to go. And that's actually not that's not accurate because um, obviously we would um, you know we, we're climbing slowly so we're going to be cruising at about 180 200 knots so um, don't get too panicked by that um, by that 5 hours 42 we, we, we would struggle to stay in the air for 5 hours 42 <clears throat> and that's our flight plan literally one one uh, thing on it it's going to make navigation easier because um, we are literally going to know exactly, rough, you know, roughly how long it is before we arrive. Let's keep feeding in that torque, and uh, we can probably uh, turn the overhead floods down a bit. That's better, a bit more ambiance. So it's not showing any wind, but. Um, we are um, flying 129 to go 126 and I think probably 
again that's probably more to do with um, the compass um, the deviation between the compass heading and the magnetic heading or the uh, variation between the um, magnetic heading and the true heading. Do you remember Cadbury's Dairy Milk? Very tasty. CDMVT stands for compass and then you add the variation and you get to the magnetic heading and then you add the you know, compass then you add the deviation to get to the magnetic heading magnetic herring and from the magnetic herring you add the variation and get to the true heading not that the true heading is is that relevant actually in the plane because you're always flying on compasses now you see I'm glad I didn't put 10,000 in there now because we would have been leveling off about now wouldn't we normally let's go down here and just um, reduce the climb rate the old-fashioned way by doing it straight on the autopilot and I'm going to carry on feeding in that torque because it drops off drops off quickly if I think if you do more than five minutes on more than 2000 though your engines pack up so and that's not a good thing as we say in aviation parlance I'll show you, have I shown you the wing icing things? you see you can't see anything out there can you? But supposing um, you were worried about icing, which obviously you wouldn't be, with it being still being 10 degrees outside. But we've got an icing light here. I'll just flick that on, and you can inspect the wing leading edges. Can you see that? I'm sure I've shown you this, haven't I? There we are. Look, got a nice view of the wing leading edges there. And this is the bit, the icing, anti-icing element. I don't know whether it's just black because that's um, absorbs heat and radiates heat better and therefore prevents icing and clears icing more quickly and there's just a heating element in there and, and some of them they actually have like a rubber a rubber sleeve over the front which literally inflates and as it inflates it um, cracks all the ice off so that's the icing light which if you didn't know you'd wonder what that was because when you click it, and it's very difficult to see that it does anything. In fact, from the external view. Oh, there is a tail light. Oh, excellent. I always get this wrong. I always use the um, the uh, hat on the joystick to go up and down, and it's not. It's the up and down keys on the um, keyboard. So there is right. Okay. We jump back inside again and turn the tail flood off. We can jump outside with shift four. And there we are, and we are completely dark. Now the other thing we could do is nip round the front and have a look and see if there's any lights visible. How do you know when you're round the front? Well, the flashing from, from the front you can see we can't see anything well, what we can do actually what we can do is see a flashing light from below if we go up we can see a flashing red light on the top we can actually see the airfield there can you see the airfield that's interesting and we can see a strobe light there and a strobe light there so let's go around to the left and you'll see that the strobe is actually in front of the left the port left port light red is on the left and again so there we are from the back we can see the strobe 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 and flashing red light but no navigation light so if you can see a color you know, we, we can see we can see strobes and a green can't we so we know that the plane that we're looking at is flying from our left to our right it's a solid green as well don't, not a flashing green and that's more important because if we go around to the other side and look at the red then we can see uh, a still a not flashing red so we know that the plane in front of us is flying from our right to our left I don't know if we've still got the landing lights on we should. let's just line up those two red lights and we all know that we're looking at the plane head on feed in more torque just check we're still climbing at something approaching 130 knots which is the best climb speed and then switch the landing lights off 
and the taxi light off. Jump outside again. I think it's made the slightest bit of difference to the lights, isn't it? Oh, well, that's the, they're under the tail there. That might be why. Sorry, I know you probably can't see all this. The lights were on, you would be able to see it. Okay, let's line up the two red lights again. So now we're directly in front of the plane. We'll jump inside, turn the landing lights on. The taxi light one might not expect to see because it might only come on when the wheels are down. I can't see any landing light there, can you? I would expect to see something a bit more than that. Oh. Oh, I know why, because it's... When we go outside, it puts us around the back of the plane. Mind you, there's still no landing light, so... So, so no, no, uh... That's funny, isn't it? Because, again, it's... It's there on the runway. I wonder if it's... If you put the gear down, it comes on. Maybe just when you put the gear down. Let's check the pressurisation. Uh, where's the pressurisation? Here's the pressurisation. No, let's not adjust the trim. Let's just zoom in and see how we're doing with the pressurisation. What we could do is we could actually adjust these condition levers, couldn't we, down to low or idle. That's probably enough. It just looks sideways. So. We've got a cabin altitude of 6,000 feet and an outside, an adjusted pressure altitude of 19,000 and we're, we're pretty well level off there. So it's 19,000. Let's jump to the altitude. Yeah, we are we're just coming up to 19,000. It's still climbing, it's still going at 140 knots, which is fine. A little bit low on the torque, feed more torque in. Right, okay, that's it. So remember we said 19,000 feet, 19,000 torque. That's the end of the torque. So if I just press 7 again, which is this key I've got set up for the default flying view, it'll take me back to the last view I, I adjusted to, which was this one. And that's... Um, yeah, so it's going up. It's still going up, isn't it? 20,000, although it doesn't... It is actually... It's not. It's not on zero there, but it's actually going down a bit. So it's depressurizing slightly. So of course it is. It's depressurizing, isn't it? Climb. No, I think that's the climb. That's the descent. I think it's de depressurizing. It should be pressurizing slightly. No. Okay. Let's get this right. This should be up, but this should be depressurizing. As you go up, the cabin depressurizes as you climb. So it's. I suppose. Is it? Does that count as depressurizing? I suppose it does. Perhaps it's depressurizing slowly then. Perhaps that is depressurizing. Good job I didn't take off with the flaps down because I'd never have put them up. Right, back to seven. Right, I'm going to stick with you till the climb and until we level off. And then um, I'll, um, you know, you don't want the boring bit. I mean, there might be a bit in the middle where the sun comes up. That would be good, wouldn't it? OK, pop quiz. We're on the equator. What time does the sun come up? Answer. Pause. Pause now if you want to think about it. Answer. Six o'clock in about nine minutes time. So it doesn't matter that uh, we're at... Uh, it's actually the um, winter solstice. In other words, it's the shortest day on the northern hemisphere, the longest day in the southern hemisphere. So good day to all of you uh, guys and girls in Australia who are enjoying your winter on the beach. I suppose you'd call it your summer, wouldn't you? But um, on the equator, you have a 12 hour day the whole year round. And we're still bang on. And we're still on bang on. I wonder if we can get the destination in. Yeah, we can. Look, there we go. We're nowhere. We're nowhere near. <laughs> I'll keep it like that because um, if we ever do need to divert, then um, we can. We could divert, couldn't we, to GGOV, wherever that is. Um, while we're waiting for the sun to come up, we might, um, excuse me, we could have a little muck about, couldn't we? No, I'm not going to do a direct two. In fact, let's not do it with this one. Let's go to, um, 
nav. Oh, it doesn't have the flight plan in. No, okay. Let's just clear that. Don't want to do. We don't want to do procedure. We want to do nearest. Okay. Let's go back to nav, small right to there, and put that away so we don't muck it up. So let's just do a quick, uh, uh, a sort of a practice diversion to GGOV. So what we do is we go large right, large right to nearest, enter. Hmm. Obviously nearest would be, um, nearest wouldn't be that. That would be nearest. Actually I would go to GBYD, wouldn't you? Let's just get rid of the cursor and go back. Zoom out. Yes, oh this one's still got the old treatment plan in. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's not stall. Let's disengage the autopilot. I'm going to put it in a thousand feet per minute descent until we pick up some airspeed. And then we're going to go back to the autopilot. We're going to put it in a hundred feet a minute climb. 200 to do. And then re engage the autopilot. Okay. Down, down, down. 200 feet a minute will be fine. Thank you very much. Okay. Five points if you spotted that stall, that stall before it started. Ten points to the makers of the aircraft who designed it so that it wouldn't stall, even if an idiot was flying it. And another five points if you can tell me at least one of the skills that was demonstrated there. In my humble opinion, one, the ability not to panic, although not actually being in the aircraft and not actually being at 24,000 feet and not actually being stalled probably help. Secondly, a very rapid assessment of what was going on, obviously taking notice of the warning signs as well recognizing that, that one of those beeps was the stall warning, one of those beeps was the autopilot disengaging and not the plane leveling off as you'd expect and thirdly uh, taking immediate corrective action which was to recognize that the nothing was flying the plane it was going into a spiral dive and it needed some sort of meat based computer to grab the joystick and pull out of the dive and level off uh, until the airspeed built back up again and then and then what I've done is um, but you tend to get a bit confused when you recover from a situation like that you might end up flying back to front by which I don't mean flying backwards although you might end up flying backwards but um, I mean you just end up flying in the wrong direction you know you, you might be flying east and then all of a sudden you're flying west and so you're, you're following the green arrow the wrong way because you're panicking and then you know something's not right etc 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 so um, so everything's still set on the autopilot. The only thing that wasn't correct on the autopilot was the climb rate. I wanted to have a much, much more gentle. My mistake was to climb at 1400 or 1600 feet per minute up to 25,000 feet. And the plane just literally cannot do that. It's not an SR-71, you know, it's not, um, it's not an F-18. Um, so really that was a big fail on my part. and. Um, would have we would have had a lot of spilled gin and tonic if that had happened. <laughs> ah. Okay, that's why I fly simulators and only very rarely real planes. So I'm happy that everything is fine again now. So we're climbing at 200 feet a minute, and then we're going up to 2500 and blah blah blah. Good. So where were we? Completely forgotten what I was talking about there. Probably something blithering on about the equator and the sunset. Ah, oh, there we are. Look at that. On the dot. Six o'clock. The sun's coming up, and I expect it to come up somewhere over here because east on the 
the compass is this way. Oh, we were doing a diversion, weren't we? That's right. Let me just have a quick look and see. Um, now that beep is a nice beep because that tells me we're 300 feet away from our assigned altitude. We were going to do an unplanned diversion to GGOV. Well, we nearly did a spiral dive to GGOV, didn't we? That would have been unplanned. Let's go in a bit to see if there's anywhere closer. No. Okay, so GGOV. Here is how to do a diversion to GGOV. Go to nearest. This will give you the two nearest F fields. We don't want those. Let's assume. Let's let's do. Let's say we do. Let's so. Let's go and then we'll go down. Oh, GBYD just vanished. GOGG. GOGG is a VFR airfield, which is not brilliant because it may or may not have lights, and it certainly doesn't have an ILS. So if we were flying in the dark, we wouldn't really be very happy with that. Uh, the other thing is that we are actually flying away from it according to this. So it's a bearing of 250, which would mean, which is pretty much the reverse of where we're flying. Um, and it's 6,500 feet long, which is about 2,200 yards, which is not bad. There's 1,760 yards in a mile, so it's over a mile long. So there's, there's absolutely no way we wouldn't land there, providing we could see it. And we should be able to see it with the sun coming up. So, having assessed that that's suitable, and you can only make these decisions if the plane is not on fire. If the plane's on fire, then just get on the bloody ground. It doesn't matter where. Um, so, there, 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 what we do, we just go direct to, and it's put it in there. We don't have to pronounce it. And just press activate, enter. There we go. And if we go to flight plan, uh, no, not flight plan, go back to nav and go small white one you'll see there it is. Now to navigate there what we would need to do is um, put it put it on the um, nav1 and um, um, press nav and then and providing this was on GPS or, or this was on is it this one or this one? This one was on GPS then it would follow that purple line, that, that, that uh, magenta line. But we're not going there but we don't want to go there. So we'll put that back. Now I'm just going to wait for the sun to come up. So if you don't want to um, um, if you don't want to wait for the sun to come up then I suggest you skip to part two of um, Banjul to wherever it is we're going. D-I-A-P. Do you remember where it was? Was it Freetown? It wasn't Freetown was it? Somewhere in Cote d'Ivoire wasn't it? somewhere French. Okay, anyway. I'm going to I'm going to enjoy the flight because I'm going to look out the window in a minute and as the sun comes up we're going to get a lovely view of the um, the savannah. Might even see um, an elephant or two. Be surprising what you can see from 25,000 feet. Anyway, won't be long now. See you later. I've forgotten to do and that's find the props so that's just what we're watching this meter here I want it to come down to about 19 I'm pressing F3 to pull these levers back simultaneously because it's pretty difficult to do it with the uh, you'll see the fuel flow come down a bit because we're taking bigger chunks of air but we're still still um, still not that impressive is it the old fuel flow still um, 300 pounds an hour and if we look at the, where's the fuel? Here we are. We've got 1,500 pounds, so we're doing 300 pounds an hour per engine. So we've got about five hours flying. We've got plenty. We've got plenty. Let's do a quick feeder check. So yeah, we've done the fuel. Radio. We're not using the radio. The engines are fine. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, that's a little bit lower than 1900. Let's just put that up to 
1900 because that is the most fuel efficient. I'm going to go down so I can read those dials correctly. That's 1900, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, 300 pounds per engine, and then uh, nominal um, oil temperatures and pressures. Absolutely fine. Excellent. Beacon and strobes are on. Everything that's on. Ooh. Everything that should be on is on. We can turn the um, auto ignition off, you see. Oh, the auto feather's on as well. Perhaps we don't need the auto feather on. Let's turn that off. That's it. Let's turn the... That's just armed, isn't it? Is it armed? Does it armed mean on? I think armed means if it flames out, then it will... It will attempt to reignite. So I'm going to leave that on. Mind you, although Auto Feather is armed and it didn't like that, did it? Mind you, we've got nothing on the control panel. So, what are you going to do? Oh dear, it's more to fly in this. I'd rather be a passenger in the back. Do you see the temperature? Minus 17. Minus 16. We are flying further south, I suppose. We're probably actually still quite far north. I think um, Kenya's on the equator, isn't it? Mind you, we're on the wrong side of uh, Africa for Kenya. The, um, we're up to um, 172 knots, and so if we click on flight plan here, uh, or is it the um, nav? Here we are. Yeah, you see the flying time's gone down to three hours, so we can easily we, we can easily do that. We can easily do that. So engines, and then the DI is um, the DI is uh, just uh, between 12 and 15, nearer 12. The compass is between 12 and 15, nearer 12. And the altimeter is I've got the Q and H dialed in 1013, 29.91, I think it is technically. And we, I've got twenty-five thousand dialed in. We're at twenty-five thousand feet, and that's a lovely. Look at that's what the passenger's view is. That's what I went to do. We need to dial in twenty-five, twenty-six thousand. So, um, what have we got here? Let's just zoom in a bit. We've got twenty-five thousand feet there, and we pretty much. And a cabin pressure of 8,000, which is fine. 10,000 is when the air gets a bit too thin to breathe. 8,000 is what most um, commercial airliners depressurise to. Although I think actually they they uh, don't depressurise to 8,000 now. Some of them do a bit less. Because uh, I get I in particular I get very um, um, weird on flights if uh, there's no oxygen. So I'll leave those lights on. That's they're all right. No, no, I am going. No, I am going. I've done everything. I'm having a happy, done diversion. I've done um, a bang on course. Yep, a bang on course. I'm happy. I'm going to go and uh, have a quick um, hobnob with the rich and shameless. I'll um, see you later.